Right guys, welcome to Autobahn episode 2. We got so much great feedback on the uh, pilot episode that, you know what, I figured I'd keep doing this because I like it. It's fun. I know the music was a bit too loud and I know that the lighting wasn't great. I've got some lights. Ready? So as you can see, a bit too bright at the minute to be using them directly in my face at least, but for work on the cars they're going to be great. Right, so I've had a, an interesting week with my cars. Not really at all. I've not been doing a lot, it's been very cold, it's been snowing, it's, it's been pretty shit the weather uh, in the UK this week. The Audi has actually been fine all week until yesterday. Uh, Friday afternoon, leaving work, uh, the car started up fine, turning the key, it's, uh, it took a couple of cranks but nothing, nothing too concerned, you know, it's still running alright. But then when I went to leave work and I got to the traffic lights, um, rush hour, traffic, Friday afternoon, you can imagine what's going to happen. The car cut out and uh, yeah, it wouldn't restart, it wouldn't start back up. Now it was quite low on fuel, so I'm guessing that was part of the problem and it does, you know, I am still thinking it's fuel related, the issue that I'm having. Now I've got a plan for the Audi going forward, I'm going to rebuild the tandem pump. Uh, the reason for that is, I noticed that one of the vacuum hoses uh, on the tandem pump the other day was a bit loose. Um, so obviously that needs fixing, because that's going to be letting air in maybe, but certainly we're losing vacuum, which is probably why my brakes feel so shit. Now, a new tandem pump's about £400, so I don't really want to replace a full pump on a car that's probably worth £400 itself. So the plan is, you can get a rebuild kit for about 30 quid off eBay. I'm going to get some chemical metal and just seal up the vacuum where it's loose. And uh, yeah, hopefully, that'll solve the Audi. Now, in order to get the right rebuild kit, I'm going to have to try and find the um, part number on the tandem pump. I'm going to try and do that in a second. That's going to be a bit of a pain because it's right at the back of the engine, but I'm going to have a go at that. And then, we're going to be trying to get the E36 back on the road. So we're going to have to bleed everything on the car, we're going to have to do the front and rear brakes and the clutch. Um, I've got a tool which I bought about five or six years ago to do this. So this is a Gunson Easy Bleed and it's basically a pressure bleeder. What you do is, it's got, it's got a few little attachments, look. It runs off the air valve from a tyre, so obviously I've got plenty of tyres and plenty of wheels, plenty of air going spare. Um, you basically top that up with brake fluid, use the pressure from the air of the tyre and it just pumps it through the lines. So get this attached up onto the uh, reservoir and then hopefully when you just crack one of the nipples we should see fluid coming through. Um, it's been a while since I've used it and I can't remember if it's any good or not so hopefully it does the job. Alright now just before I start I've got some good news on the Integra front. Um, the Integra is getting the rust repairs finally done next week. It should, should be done um, by middle of next week and then we can look at getting the Integra and all the mountain of bits that I've got for it sitting over in Hull we can get them here and then I'll be able to come down and sort the Integra out properly. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but until that time, we've got two other cars needing attention. It's going to make a start now and I'll update you shortly. Right, so here we are in the Audi's engine bay again. I just want to show you quickly the uh, vacuum pipe I referred to earlier, which is loose. Very common issue on these on tandem pumps if you've got bad brakes like I have. I've known about this for a while, but for some reason I never put two and two together and got four. Right, so you're now looking at the back of the engine. The fitting that goes into the vacuum pump itself is loose. And uh, I have tried to seal it up before, just with seal them, that's not lasted very long at all, so what I'm going to use instead is some chemical metal. So here's the tandem pump, here's the vacuum side, and here's the fuel side. Now if the seal between those two is broken, that could be letting air in as well as letting fuel into the oil, which is what I found when I changed the oil the other weekend. <sighs> but I can't quite find the part number. Okay, I've managed to get a brand from this, it's a look pump. I had to uh, put my phone down the back here and take a picture if I was using this LED torch to light up. Um, the picture came out very blurry but I could just about make out the, uh, the look branding. Right, I really should be working on the E36 now but I'm too curious and I want to pull this cam cover off. Right, so it's definitely an engine. I mean, I was hoping to maybe see some streaky oil up here. You know, some oil with some fuel in it but can't see any of that. All the oil looks fine. Right, I'm going to put this back together and then have a look at the E36. Now it is getting quite cold, so I'm going to put on my 621 beanie hat in memory of the YouTube channel. There used to be a YouTube channel called 621 uh, about Hondas and stuff. It used to be pretty good back in the day. Okay, the lighting with these LED lights is strange. As you can probably imagine with LEDs, they don't disperse the light that great. They kind of just send it one way. Um, so it might take me a while to figure this out, how to get the best lighting kind of in this corner. So I'm going to take the wheel off and just see if I can get any decent access on those bushes. I think this is the only wheel that's not bent. Have a look at this bodging I've had to do. It's got a nut and bolt through the uh, existing ball joint and uh, managed to wedge a swan neck spanner there, look, in between the, uh, the arm 
and onto the nut there because this was so tight I had to get a breaker bar on it. Also just take note of how dirty these arches are. This is, uh, they weren't this bad before, I think this is just what happens when you're drifting in shit weather. <laughs> yeah, detailing world, I know I need to get this cleaned up. Right, I'm onto the uh, lower bolt now which is where the, uh, the bush that failed was on the other side. Uh, this is really tight as well. Now the plan so far is to just get the bolts out of the bushes that I need to change um, and then try and figure out a way of moving the arms out of the way so that I can get the tool in to, uh, to remove the old bushings. So I'm just trying to break this, this free here. It's fucking tight boys. You get some more leverage. I've just realised I'm going the wrong way. That's going to tighten it, isn't it? <laughs> Let's try going the other way. Jesus Christ. Well, as you can see, when you go the right way, it does, does come apart a bit easier. And the bolt has this kind of like weird egg-shaped washer on it, which does the adjustings. Okay, so I've got managed to get access to this lower bush, so I'm going to make a start on that. This is what failed on the other side of the car uh, at Driftland, um, so you know, makes sense to change this one as well. Okay, so I've got the tool set up here, as you can see. Uh, I've had to use a bottle of coolant here hanging on this. Uh, on the arm coming from the uh, rear subframe just to get that out of the way. What we're going to be doing is pulling the bush through using this little you know, basic little pull tool. You could make this yourself with some sockets and stuff like that but I, I, I bought this ready made just because um, like for the sake of buying sockets and buying threaded bar and everything uh, this was all about £25 off eBay and it, it worked really well on the other side so hopefully it'll be just as good on this side. Alright, that's uh, not taking very long at all, that. Sounds like it's done, it feels like it's done. Nasty. It's quite hard to show on camera, but as you can see inside, it's looking pretty pretty crusty in there. So I'm going to give that a clean up, just with a wire brush, and then we'll uh, be greasing it as well, just to try and get the bushing a bit easier. Better already boys, better already. Just so hard to show on camera. Right now it's time to put the new ball joint in and replace the bush. New burst sold. All right, that's the uh, ball joint in, as you can see. She needs to clean up the grease slightly, but she's good to go. Right, so onto the uh, top one. I've removed the lower shock bolt, which has dropped the arm quite a lot. It looks like I'm gonna have enough room to get that out now. Uh, let's go. Well, it's almost out, but the tool's just slightly too big. I'm going to try and get the hammer on this one. There we go. New vest sold. Yeah, it was good fun that, uh, went really well. Obviously there's no point in putting the wheel back on because we need to do, uh, bleed these brake calipers now, so let's do that. Right guys, so it's time to bleed the brake, test out this Gunston Easy Bleeder, see what it's all about. I bought this to do my 320D about five or six years ago now. Uh, luckily the fitting is exactly the same on the E36, so it all fits up right. Um, one thing that I did note is you're not allowed to use tyres with uh, more than 20 psi in them. It says on the bottle explicitly do not use more than 20 psi of pressure. So obviously these are old skid tyres and uh, yeah they're about 60 in them. So uh, I've let that down so now I want 20 psi in the tyre. Um, I've just tested the system now, it all looks, all looks good and uh, yeah the car's jacked up and I should be able to go around and just crack the bleed nipples off and let the fluid and air come out and then hopefully just fluids and then we should have uh, some good brakes again. Right, so what's going off here? We've got our bottle full of brake fluid. 
that's just sitting there nice. We've got the cap going onto the uh, brake fluid reservoir. This is also the clutch fluid reservoir, because on these cars you only have one reservoir, you don't have individual ones, so this does the, the brakes on the clutch. Um, and then obviously we've got his old, old skid wheel, not much left on there. And what we do is, it's just a simple kind of air valve, I guess. What you'd expect to see, you just clamp that on. What it's going to do is just kind of force the fluid through and obviously whenever you break a, a brake nipple then it'll give an opening for the fluid to come out, for air to come out and it should just shove it all through. It should make bleeding the car very simple and uh, yeah obviously I'm on my own here as well so obviously when you bleed cars you're only two people but maybe not in this case. We'll see if it works. I can't remember if it worked or not last time I used it. I can't remember if I just got someone else to come and help me or not but we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Now we've got a leak. So once that was under pressure, we started getting uh, fluid leaking from here. So maybe there's a seal missing or something. I'll have to have a look at that. And there is a seal on there, but maybe it wasn't tight enough. Maybe it was too tight. Right, I've done that double tight this time, so hopefully no leaks. Can't get much tighter than that. All right, let's try that again. If it leaks, then the job's fucked. That's better. Okay, skip forward about half an hour or so. I've, I've bled the brakes. Uh, once I connected up the uh, easy bleed correctly and had no leaks, uh, I got a new leak. Once everything was under pressure, I got a new leak on the on the back. Uh, where I'd reconnected the trailing arm, I'd not put one of the brake fittings in correctly. Um, that's maybe not something that I would have picked up on if I was bleeding it by pressing the pedal, which maybe maybe that's a pro for the easy bleed. But it, it, it worked really well, to be honest. Yeah, it's all right. Four degrees in here currently. Cold. So that brings us to the end of another episode. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching. I really enjoy making these videos. Um, hopefully the lighting's been a bit better as well. It's these the way LEDs disperse light is never ideal, and you know it's, it's sometimes a bit difficult to uh, to get the right camera angles that I want. Like when I was doing the brakes, it was I tried to get a decent camera angle, and I was just like, in order to get a camera angle where you can see what I'm doing, and I can also do what I need to do is sometimes quite difficult as a challenge but um, yeah sometimes I'm just gonna end up just doing it like I did with the brakes I just just got it done and you don't need to see me bleed brake the easy bleed thing seemed to work yeah it was good worked well happy with that uh, bushes are done so all that's left now to get the E36 back on the road is the tyres uh, I've ordered two new front tyres I've gone for ADO8Rs 235 40, 17. Um, so let's just give us some nice grip on the front. I'm also going to repaint the faces on the uh, on the M3 rep wheels that I've got, just to try and make it look a bit smarter. Because I'm worried it's going to look shit. To be honest, that's, that's, my, that's my concern. I'm worried it's going to look shit with the uh, M3 wheels on the front and the uh, nicer wheels at the back. But also, I need to get that tandem pump rebuild kit for the Audi. Uh, get that done. Kind of looking forward to that as well. Now that I've seen how the innards work on the, on the tandem pumps, it looks quite quite cool. I'm quite looking forward to taking it apart. Um, doesn't need any special tools or anything. Just needs the the fresh gaskets and fresh seals, and should be good to go. Right, it's absolutely freezing. It's not actually freezing. Obviously, it's a few degrees above freezing, but it's fucking cold. So I'm gonna go. Hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you next time. Just realised I'm going the wrong way.